Hi everyone, this is uh, Snula. Today's video is going to be a little update on Intel CPUs. There's been a lot of talk about 4 core i7s and uh, the new 6 core i7s. I also mentioned in many of my previous videos where I did price comparisons between Mac Pros, iMacs, and, and a Hackintosh with the i7 that in the future you would be hopefully be able to um, upgrade your i7 CPU to a 6 core and the reality is now here we're gonna start with uh, this web page I'm gonna post a link to it in the sidebar and uh, this is from Intel and they're doing a these are benchmarks of the new Intel I Core i7-980X Extreme Edition. That's the first 6-core i7 they're releasing. It has 6 cores and instead of 8 megabytes of cache it has 12 megabytes. And it's the first CPU that uses a 32 nanometer uh, architecture. And from what I've read that actually helps uh, temperature wise because these bad boys are actually running cooler than the 45 nanometer i7s and if you go down here you'll see that they um, benchmarked it against uh, i7 975 which is the fastest 4 core i7 at, at this time they are both uh, 3.33 gigahertz with a 3.6 gigahertz turbo speed for one core operation. Uh, but as you can see here, the first here is, uh, well, I'm not sure what this is. Uh, I never used this spec CPU 2006, but you see it's faster uh, in their benchmarks. Maybe not so much, but if we go down to Cinebench, the six core performs 49% better than the four core. And that's relatively linear if you think you have four cores, you have six cores, six cores are 50% more cores. So it seems like you're getting a 50% increase of performance. And that's a very nice thing. Also, they tried with uh, in high definition video encoding. As you can see, it's about 20% faster in Sony Vegas Pro. And they done some gaming testing using 3D Mark Vantage, and the CPU score is 50% better. Wow, what a shocker! And some game benchmarks. Um, I don't know. Does it say which game they did test? No, but you get a, a slight increase. Uh, okay, they did it in Crisis and Resident Evil. So for gaming, eh, maybe not the six-core i7 is what you need. But if you're doing 3D rendering, if you're doing video editing, anything that is really CPU intensive and you need all the power you can get, the new 6 core i7s are what you need. And I'm going to take up this here for uh, my motherboard, which I've been using as a template in my videos. And f a while ago, I wanted to make a video about this a while ago, but um, I haven't had the time. In the end of January, uh, the, new, the BIOS version from 29th of January 2010 supports the new i7 6 core processors. And that means if you have built or are planning to build a Hackintosh or a Windows running computer with this motherboard, you will either be able to buy the 6 core now or you can buy a a cheap i7 4 core now and maybe like 6 to 12 man months that when the 6 cores are getting cheaper you can easily upgrade the CPU only and get a totally different machine you'd blow the 27 inch iMac out of the water if you had one of these also the UD3 which is like the budget model I've uh, I've presented in my videos it's a cheaper motherboard, supports less memory, doesn't have um, two Ethernet ports, and also that now supports 6 core i7, and that's good news. And if we go to Newegg, 
uh, you see that uh, the 920 is basically at the same price as it has been for the last couple of months. And in January, February, the Intel released a new 930, which you see is a little bit more expensive. It's, uh, well, now it's 15 bucks more expensive. Well, a while ago, it was only like five or six dollars. And I would absolutely recommend anyone buying or building a i7 computer now to use the 930 instead of the 920. It's just a slight price change, 10, 15 bucks, but you're getting a CPU that's running at 2.8 gigahertz instead of 2.66. And also that would be probably easier to push this a little bit further when it comes to overclocking. And then we have the new bad boy on the block. It's coming out very soon, about a week. It's the Intel Core i7-980X Extreme Edition. It's a 3.33 gigahertz CPU, six cores, 12 megs of cache, and you can see here people are already testing it. it they're overclocking it to 4.4 gigahertz. This guy is, uh, uses water cooling, uh, but another guy down here is, says uh, because of the new 32 nanometer manufacturing it runs very cool about 89 Fahrenheit on stock settings uh, that might not be comparable with other i7s because this uh, has a totally different cooler than the than the other uh, i7s so it might not be totally comparable but it's going to run cool and that's a good thing too you don't want to have uh, your computer sounding like a vacuum cleaner and uh, the, the big drawback with this is the price hundred eleven hundred and twenty dollars but if you do compare it with uh, the i7 975 which is four core running at the same speed you see that it's not that much it's almost thousand dollars so the difference is what 150 bucks I think and 150 bucks extra to get 50% more performance than this one I don't, I don't even know what that would be compared to the 920 or 930 but I can tell you this I bet it's it's probably twice as much so uh, you, you're gonna get a lot of performance with one of these guys and also I mean with one of these guys the 6 core and also I will think I believe that um, this price will drop uh, during the next 6 to 12 months you will see a price drop maybe in a couple of hundred dollars maybe not that much but there will I, I would seriously believe that there will also be other 6 core CPUs. I mean, this is 3.33 gigahertz. Let's say they make uh, 2.66 or 2.8 gigahertz six core. Uh, it wouldn't be $1,200 or $1,120. It would be a lot, lo a lot cheaper. So this is really good news for our us PC lovers because this means if you have an existing rig with the i7 using the 1366 uh, socket. You can easily upgrade as long as your BIOS or your motherboard supports the new CPU. And most of them will, some of them probably won't. But if you have used uh, the motherboard I recommended in my videos, you will be able to. And so just changing the CPU and you can get a lot of more performance. And I would like to see any Mac on the planet do this change the CPU after a year or two. I bet you can't. So that's it for me today. Um, short video, just a small update. I'm uh, going to continue working on some of my other videos. And I hope you enjoyed this one and uh, I'll catch you later. Have a nice day.